Hi everyone, Melissa here, and today we're doing something new, which shouldn't be a surprise anymore, and just a little bit festive. So let's get into it. I'm going to be turning this Monster High Abby doll into the Christmas time demon of Krampus. To get started, we have to remove her factory settings, if you know what I mean. I'm going to save this hair for a later project. And now for a spa treatment, and then off with her head. Looking good, but now let's remove her face. Mmm, yummy. All clean, and now it's time to drill into her skull. Using super glue, I'm going to glue some armature wire into those holes that I just drilled and shape the wire with my hands. Cutting off her factory horns with a razor blade and now she was ready for some sculpting. Use an epoxy sculpt. I'm going to go ahead and add that onto that wire I just set to create her horns. I forgot to mention that this is my first time customizing a doll and my first time using epoxy sculpt. I have experience with polymer clays, but this fought me a lot more than I expected. And I learned a lot from this project and how to use it in the future. However, I struggled so badly with it that I ended up having to redo her right horn twice. In the end, I think they turned out okay. Now let's give her a new face. To start the face up, I coat her in a layer of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Matte, and then using chalk pastels to blush her face. I focus on adding color to her natural shadows of her face, bringing in more depth that is naturally there in the sculpt. I seal the blushing layer with another coat of Mr. Super Clear and I start drawing her eyes with watercolor pencils. I start with red as my base, working on building the structure of the eyes. I know the story of Krampus has become a beloved yet ominous figure in holiday lore in recent years, but for those who may be unfamiliar or just need a chilly reminder, the origins of this emetic creature are steeped in chilling folklore. While the tales vary in their nuances across regions, the essence remains hauntingly similar. Alongside St. Nicholas roams a demon called Krampus. This male violet being, with fur as dark as night and a tongue as red as blood, sports the horns and legs of a goat. His presence was no merry coincidence. No, Krampus arrived not to deliver gifts, but to claim those who found themselves on the naughty list. Legend has it that mischievous children, those who strayed from the path of nicety, were at the mercy of Krampus, dragged to the depths of hell or devoured. Such was their fate. Personally, I would take the coal. So where does female Krampus fit in? At the turn of the century, Krampus began to transform on Christmas cards, taking on a feminine form. This depiction, a female Krampus, emerged as a punisher of misbehaving men, dragging them into the abyss of darkness rather than children. It's a captivating twist and one that stirred my imagination and inspired my own redemption of Krampus. In my version, this holiday harbinger isn't just targeting mischievous children. No, no, no. Instead, she's out there dealing with naughty spouses and partners. A little modern twist to an age-old tale. So, as the festive season unfolds, beware not only of Santa's ghosts, but also of the shadowy presence that might just be keeping an eye on those who veer off the path of decency. Now that I have built up a nice base, I'm going back over my eye in certain areas with a black watercolor pencil. 
really accentuating the water lines and certain eye folds in the areas. Using a gray watercolor pencil, I build up the shadows even more. At this stage, it's all about adding very thin layers of color, building up shadows in certain areas and bringing out highlights in others. I start adding chalk pastels to the eye on the outer edges. For this look, I want a smoky look for Krampus with just a little hint of red. So I start building up red and buffing it out with a softer brush. I then add black chalk pastel to darken up and really smoke out that look. For the lips, I start the same way I do with the eyes. I use a red watercolor pencil and start building up the shadows in certain areas. Since I'm gonna have a tongue on Krampus, I kinda wanted to make sure the lips were centered with the tongue, and I start kinda lining the lips and adding the texture of the lips. I come in with my black watercolor pencil and start darkening certain areas. I thought it was too much, so I used my eraser to pull off a lot of the color and then started using chalk pastel to fill in the rest of the color. I liked this a lot more. I thought this was a softer look, but still had a little texture from the watercolor pencils poking through. And just like the eyes, I started building up more and more layers of the different pastels and watercolor pencils. And now I'm adding eyebrows on, which really give that final vibe to her face. I wanted the eye to be a little bit more punchy, so I started layering some light pink and different shades of red on the iris to build up this dark, deep red color that I wanted for Krampus's eye. I am so sorry that I didn't get any of the eyelash drawing, but um, we do have a little bit of the white acrylic added to the eye, and here's the final face up. 
I knew Krampus was going to have black hair, so black horns on black hair probably would be a little lost. So I opted to do about a medium gray. And then I did a little bit of dry brushing with some black into the creases of the horn. I did do some white highlights, but I didn't catch that on camera either. And then I also put a little of gloss varnish onto the horns. For the hair, I brushed out some yarn and cut out what I brushed out to make some wefts. I learned this from a tutorial here on YouTube and I will make sure to leave a link to that tutorial in the description. Once the glue is dry, I can pull these off and trim them as needed and I have nice little hair wefts for my doll. For the front of the hairline, I didn't think I could fit any of the wefts so I punched some hair that I made with the yarn into the front. For the rest of the head, I went ahead and glued wefts on where there normally would be hair. I put little pieces here in the front so that way I could curl them. Laying them this way so that way when the hair falls back, it will fold and cover and have a really nice hairline. See? Just like that. And there she is. And we can't forget to curl those little sections in the front with a flat iron. And now that her face is done, we can go on to some body modifications. First, we gotta cut off her feet. And then we gotta sand off her panties. And then once that's done, we can start using some epoxy sculpt to bold up the hooves. Yep, they look like goat feet to me. Next, I'm gonna start blushing the body and bringing out the different shadows and highlights that are already on the sculpt of the body. I did it around the collarbones, the knees, and then I also used black to make her hands dark and fade up to her forearms. I did a little bit of highlighting with some pink and some face highlighter from an old palette that I used to have. It's kind of subtle, but you can see it in person. And if you could be snatching people down to the depths of hell, then you could need to have your mani done. I'm painting this section of the leg black because this is where I'm going to be adding some hair for a fur-like look in the future. And I don't want the blue of the leg showing between the wefts of hair that I will be adding. I dry brush some white onto the hooves to give a little bit of texture. Adding some varnish to the nails so it looks like she has a glossy mani. Mm. And a little bit of gloss to the hooves as well. To give Shadi the boots with the fur, I added some of the hair wefts that I made earlier to the lake. I used a toothbrush with a little bit of water to smooth the hair for the boots down. I actually learned this technique from watching another doll customizer here on YouTube. I'll make sure to drop the video where she described this technique down in the description below as well. For the tail, I wanted to make it flexible and I did a little research and found this flexible clay. I started with a bit of armature wire as my base and then rolled out some of this cost clay and put the armature wire in it. Once it was baked, I gave it a little bit of paint job to match the rest of the body. And then I also blushed the tail using chalk pastels. Using Fabri-Tac, I also attached some of the hair wefts I made to create a fluffy tail end. Krampus, being the harbinger of doom, 
deserves an outfit befitting her role as she prowls for her victims. A standard dress simply won't suffice. Only a custom-made ensemble will encapsulate her ominous presence and predatory intent. I did this by creating a pattern using masking tape. Then using that masking tape, I did a couple different versions and made a pattern that will work for her body shape. I cut that out of this fabric that I had in my stash that is just absolutely luxuriously divine. I then sewed that together, and let me say, sewing something this small was incredibly difficult as well. I added some fur trim to the edge of her dress. And an outfit is only complete with the accessories, and Krampus is no different. Glitter craft paper was used for the shackles and jewelry chain for the chain. And of course, Krampus needs her birch switch to punish all the naughty people. I used a little bit of red ribbon glued around some decor twigs to create Krampus's birch switch. As the final touches grace her form, she stands complete. Behold Krampus in her finished form, a figure posed at the edge of night, ready to unfurl terror upon unsuspecting souls. Her chilling visage, a haunting embodiment of holiday fright, marks the arrival of darkness with a foreboding Thank you so much for joining me today in this chilling creation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and to stay tuned for more creative adventures. Until next time, may your nights be merry, and I hope Krampus misses your house this holiday night. <laughs>